Hello Webizens, welcome back to another PC Games N Hardware Show. I'm Dave. And I'm Jacob. And today we are revisiting the performance figures for the most important part of a gamer's PC, the graphics card. Yes, we've rounded up the most popular discrete graphics cards from both Nvidia and AMD to put them back through their paces in our benchmarking gauntlet. With good reason, of course. Of course. Nvidia is rumoured to be replacing its two-year-old Pascal graphics card range with something a little bit more capable very soon. As such, there's not a lot more performance likely to be squeezed out of the current gen anymore. AMD's Vega cards still have a little more life in them yet, but even Team Red is rumoured to be releasing new GPUs in the first half of 2019. That means the current gen Radeon cards days are numbered too. So let's see where all those driver updates, bug fixes and engine optimizations leave the current generation of GPUs, just as their time in the sun comes to an end. Did AMD's fine wine approach pay off in the end? Or will Nvidia have the last laugh as it rolls out its new generation? Let's find out. Cue the transition. Unfortunately for AMD, it has no real contender in the ultra high-end GPU space. Nvidia's GTX 1080 Ti rules the roost, managing roughly 40 to 60 FPS across our benchmarking suite at 4K Ultra settings. That makes it the only real GeForce graphics card you should really consider for seriously high-end 4K gaming. With a score nearly 1,000 points higher than the GTX 1080 and 1,500 higher than the best of the red team, the GTX 1080 Ti has confidently smashed the demanding DX12 3D Mark Times by Test 2. And it will likely continue to perform outrageously well, even once Nvidia's next-gen graphics cards finally launch. It's a ridiculously beefy GPU that has many years of life in it yet. With the battle for the top spot well and truly wrapped up by the GTX 1080 Ti, it's the fight for second place in the high-end market where things get really interesting. For a large part of the GTX 1080's lifespan, it was almost entirely unopposed in its price-to-performance bracket. But that all changed when AMD released the RX Vega 64. Well, it was meant to. Aww. Unfortunately, the initial performance wasn't much to write home about back when the Vega 64 and 56 cards first launched. But with AMD's much lauded fine wine approach, it's all meant to get better with age. So has that helped it wrangle the top spot from the GTX 1080? The quick answer is no. In the Heaven benchmark at 4K, the GTX 1080 hits, on average, 35 FPS, dropping as low as 18 FPS. The RX Vega 64, on the other hand, is just a little shy at 30 FPS on average, but manages to best the Nvidia's minimum frame rates just a single digit at 19 frames per second. The gap only widens as the resolution decreases too. At 1080p, the Radeon card manages 99 FPS on average, meanwhile the GTX 1080 hits an impressive 139 FPS. That's pretty far off your typical margin of error. There's only really one game from our benchmarking suite where the AMD RX Vega 64 manages to keep up with the GTX 1080 across multiple resolutions, and that's Far Cry 5. The game was custom tailored to AMD cards at launch, and even with that developer bias in tow, the Radeon card is still just a little shy of actually toppling the scores posted by Nvidia's penultimate GTX. The reference RX Vega also hits a higher max temp than the founder's edition GTX 1080 at 87 degrees to 83 degrees, and draws 39% more power. But if that's not enough of a beating for the RX Vega 64, Nvidia also released the GTX 1070 Ti for a little end of year 2017 refresh. Conveniently, only shortly after AMD launched its duo of gaming Vega cards too. The GTX 1070 Ti is incredibly similar to the GTX 1080. In fact, its only major difference is the switch from GDDR5X to GDDR5 memory. Its GPU is nearly identical with just one SM missing from the GTX 1080's complete set of 20. And while it was sold as the RX Vega 56 killer, it also manages to be a pretty good RX Vega 64 Assassin too. In Assassin's Creed Origins, the GTX 1070 Ti outperforms the RX Vega 64 at both 1440p and 1080p, with 4K performance on par at 35fps. The two are almost inseparable at 4K in the minimum frame rates too, at 29fps to 30fps respectively. In Total War Warhammer 2, however, the GTX 1070 Ti absolutely trounces the RX Vega 64, this time easily besting the Vega card at every resolution, performing roughly 15% better across the board. Again, it's only in Far Cry 5 that the RX Vega manages to regain composure and hit back at the GTX 1070 Ti. I'm sorry AMD, Nvidia has clearly won this round, but it's not all over for the red team just yet. The battle for the high-end cards may be over, but the upper mid-range was where AMD targeted its RX Vega 56 GPU, or Star Trek themed one, a graphics card it promised would tear up the mid-range at sub $400. 
Yeah, despite the pricing not working out as planned, the card was set to face off with Nvidia's GTX 1070, and it just about manages to trade blows with Nvidia's GP104 card. In Assassin's Creed, the GTX 1070 still takes a commanding lead over the RX Vega 56. However, in the seriously demanding Deus Ex Mankind Divided, the AMD card hits back and puts on a dominating display itself, posting 36 FPS on average at 1080p to the 1070's 32. The same goes for Far Cry 5, where the RX Vega 56 outperforms the GTX 1070 by 38 frames per second to 34 frames per second at 4K, 72 to 65 at 1440p, and 100 frames per second to the green team's 95 at 1080p. The gap closes up a little with the stellar performance from the GTX 1070 in Total War Warhammer 2 and it's neck and neck going across the rise of the Tomb Raider, but the GTX 1070 just about takes the lead as the resolution drops down to 1080p. It's a pretty fair fight between the two on the whole, and the RX Vega 56 is even a little bit cooler at 78 degrees C than the GTX 1070 at 80 degrees C. But it's not to last, the GTX 1070 hits a peak platform power of 236 watts, and the Vega 56, well that's about 100 watts more at 328 watts. The AMD card is also generally around $100 more expensive too. Not great. Not great at all. So this is another close one. While both Pascal and Polaris architectures are getting a little bit long in the tooth, the GTX 1060 6GB and RX 580 8GB have got some fight in them left for a hearty mid-range battle royale. The RX 580 takes an early lead in DX12 benchmark, 3D Mark Time Spy, but this is a lead swiftly diminished in heaven where both cards manage broadly similar scores. However, the GTX 1060 with 77 FPS at 1080p just about manages to get a nose ahead of the RX 580 with a 68 FPS average in heaven. It's also worth noting that the RX 570 4GB performs admirably across the benchmarking suite too. For the most part, the card posts scores which are just a little single digit performance point shy of the GTX 1060 and RX 580. Not bad for a second tier Polaris GPU over a year after its initial launch but the RX 580 just nudges ahead overall. These are two incredibly similar performing cards, even so late into both their respective lifespans, and they're still managing to hit scores up into 60 FPS range, even with full ultra settings enabled. Yeah, the Polaris architecture might be much more power hungry than Nvidia's Pascal, but even so, AMD's overall performance benefit in DX12 games or AMD optimized titles such as Far Cry 5 tips the scales in its favor, and that's a win for the Team Red. Both AMD and Nvidia are on the cusp of releasing new graphics cards, Nvidia hopefully by September, and AMD sometime before Q2 2019, if current rumours are anything to go on. Yeah, so while we know where the current generation of GPUs line up performance-wise, what will the next generation offer? For Nvidia, one can only assume that the next GTX 1180 will outpace the current GTX 1080 Ti. The same shift up the ladder, each card performing as well as the Pascal card above it, will likely occur throughout the entire Nvidia product stack. That means that the GTX 1160 will be as good as the current GTX 1070, the GTX 1170 as good as the GTX 1080, and so on and so forth. Which will be fantastic, especially if you look at our benchmarks where just go to show just how incredibly capable the GTX 1070 is, even with super demanding 4K workloads on Ultra. To get that all with a mid-range GTX 1160 would be fantastic. But it might not be all sunshine and roses. Nvidia has enough leniency with the current competition to bump up the prices of the next generation GPUs if it feels like it, at least the very top end cards. GDDR6 isn't cheap either, and with silicon prices already set to rise, we're hoping Nvidia won't try and keep its margins too high. Yeah, and in that case we might end up paying GTX 1080 prices for an 1170 anyway. So that generational shift wouldn't be all it was cracked up to be and could just be name only. But maybe we're being overly pessimistic. We'd love to see the next gen price competitively, even if Nvidia doesn't particularly have much of a competitor in the graphics space right now. The green team could well surprise us. Yes, and as for their competitor, well AMD could well surprise us next year with an absolute stunner of the GPU generation itself too, with Navi. But at the moment, it's just looking like a Polaris refresh from the red team in the first half of 2019, with the heavies being held back a little while longer. Still, even a rock-solid mid-range card from the red team has the potential to take down the green team's monopoly, and keep graphics card pricing in moderation across the board. Viva la competition! We hope you've enjoyed this video enough to make the many hours spent stood in front of a test bench worthwhile. And if you did, give us a like and subscribe, and check back on the channel for more. Also, make sure to check out PCGamesN.com for the very best in gaming and hardware news, reviews, features, and a whole heap of other literary delights for you to sink your eyes into. Thanks for watching. Bye.